In this video, we're going to completely solve a rough idle issue. It's a chasing the problem and fixing it video, including some adventures together and problem solving together too. In this video, there will be high level steps for the chapters, such as cleaning the mass airflow sensor, or taking off the throttle body, or repairing the air connector hose. You'll see me work through some of those items. There will also be specific guides for each step coming to the channel under the Cayenne playlist link in the description and on my channel. Now, the issue. At a stop, the Cayenne would vibrate because the RPMs were too high, around 700, and it would try and correct it by dropping the RPMs too low, and then it would almost stall itself and shake and then rinse and repeat. After the procedures in this video, even with AC at full blast, which adds strain on the system, the idle remained a smooth 600 RPM. After this procedure, I had a substantial improvement in how my base model 2008 VR6 Cayenne runs and couldn't be happier. It's also important to note that there are important differences between the VR6 and the V8, and this guide is specifically tailored for the VR6. Let's get started. I won't go into intricate detail on how an engine works, but if you're having a rough idle, the easiest thing to start with in my opinion is the air system and checking for problems and inspecting and cleaning all of the components that provide air to the system for the combustion part of the internal combustion engine. The manifestations of this premise are what we explore in this video. Let's pop the hood and see if we can find the issue. Oh, well, there we go. Your diagnostic process will not always be so simple. So we're going to fix the air intake hose, check for other issues with the air hoses, which is where you should start, and clean two things that can really impact airflow. The mass airflow sensor, which tells the engine how much air to pull, and the throttle body, which is a flap inside the air system that controls how open or closed it is, and thus controls airflow to the engine. These clips just came right off on the air intake. Step 1. Remove engine covers. On all of the covers, there's a variety of either plastic flathead screws or Torx screws. Starting with the left-hand side, we remove the flathead screw. You can pop it underneath to get it out. There's also a plastic screw here that a short Phillips head makes short work of. There's a screw here, mine's missing. T25. T20. On the right hand side, there's a screw here that you can't see me undo thanks to iPhone's autofocus, but we can see the empty spot. There should be one over here that you move in the same way. This is T25. Handy toy, came in handy for the Boxster bumper too, link in the description. I wanted to show here, like in all my other shots, how it's easy, smooth, and step by step, but for some steps you do have to wiggle it to get it out from under the trim. Don't be, don't despair if it's not straightforward. Should be fasteners here and here. My air intake hose is broken, so you don't see clips on the right hand side here, but first press in on the clips that should be on this hose holding this mass airflow sensor unit of hose and pop it out. It might take some force. Disconnect the electronic connector by pushing on the tab and pulling the connector out. And lastly, this also might take some force. Pull out the sensor housing. It has the sensor inside. Step three, remove MAF sensor. The MAF sensor is held in by T5 security Torx screws. It's a very specific bit that can be removed by a two-prong bit. I'll also link a link in the description under chapters to the specific Torx bit you'll need. So they're five-pointed security and you have to buy a very specific one. See my Boxster video. And here are those wonderful five-pointed tips. Unfortunately, there's no way to remove this. Just the MAF with these five pointers because the bottom one is blocked by the rest of the engine. Remember how it goes back in. In the next step, we're going to clean the sensor because it can be dirty even if it doesn't look it. Step four, clean MAF sensor. To clean the mass airflow sensor, you'll want to hold it a few inches away and give it short bursts of this CRC mass airflow sensor cleaner. 
This cleaner is specifically designed for the MAF sensor. The cleaner dries quickly, so we give it a few short bursts, let it dry, and try and get all the nooks and crannies, especially the larger opening. After this procedure, give it a few minutes to dry before reinstallation. Step five, remove the oil cap. To get to the throttle body, remove the oil cap. Step six, remove the front engine cover. The engine cover can be removed with a firm tug. Gentle tugs to this engine cover, just pop off. There we go. Pops right off. Step seven, remove air intake hose. We loosen the clamp holding the rest of the air intake hose to the throttle body using a seven millimeter hex. Step eight, remove throttle body. First, we remove the throttle body's electrical connector by getting a flathead under the connector and pulling it off. Then, the throttle body is held in by four Torx screws. And we want T25s. And we're using a special adapter, regular screwdriver heads, two hex, to a swivel, to an extender, to a hex socket. And this ungodly creation should help us get to these Torx bits. And we don't need the extension. I'm going to save the top one for last. It doesn't take much force to pull the throttle body off. Visually, it doesn't look extraordinarily dirty, but there is residue and it will benefit from the cleaning. We can take this opportunity to wipe down the inside of the intake. Step 9. Cleaning the throttle body. Throttle body cleaner makes quick work of the residue inside. Here's a before and shortly we show an after. Now I'm just taking a clean towel that doesn't leave any fibers behind. Look at that. I can clean all this gunk off by moving it. I like CRC branded cleaners. So here I'm using the CRC throttle body cleaner to spray and wipe it down, while occasionally actuating the throttle body by hand to reach where I need to. Unrelated, this feels like a nice, heavy, and solid piece of machinery. And there's an after shot. We, got, we were able to get most of it off. Step 10, reinstalling the throttle body. And there's a rubber grommet that fell off during cleaning. There's a groove on the right side that it goes into right here. Now we would just reinsert this rubber ring into. Once that is in position, throttle body, and it goes electrical connector to the bottom left as we re removed it. Let's take our least favorite one, the stripped one. Easily accessible spot, we get it installed. No need to over tighten. And if we really want, we can check that the rubber grommet is reinstalled by moving the butterfly and feeling that it is not treading out anywhere incorrectly. We can also admire the much cleaner, pretty throttle body now. Regular tip, screwdriver Torx 25 to the hex, to the swivel. You can actually do this one with a straight one, I think. Actually, we should finish it off with a straight one. No need to over tighten. Next, the electric connector goes back in until it clicks into place. Step 11, reinstalling the mass airflow sensor. The MAF goes back into the into its hole. And we want the air going in from the right on the sensors. So it is oriented with the oily part up this sensor in like so to capture the air. And we reinstall the two Torx T5S special ones. Step 12, removing the rest of the air intake hose. Now instead of reinstalling straight away, we can undo the two clips holding the engine air filter cover on, which is attached to the air intake hose, and that will make removing the rest of the hose simpler in the next step. Step 13, detaching the air intake hose from the air filter cover. If you don't know how to remove your air filter cover, you're not going to have fun at this step because the plastic Torx pins are inserted in a particular way. Align both pins here and here. I should just be able to pull these two. I'm kind of cheating because this one's kind of stuck, so I'm going from the bottom because mine comes pre-busted. And to get it the rest of the way out, I'll just use a professional poking device. I just pushed it the rest of the way out using a screwdriver. These are what they look like. I want that. The hose just pops straight off. Nice. Replacing the engine air filter. The engine air filter comes out and goes back in one way. Once the cover is off, it is straightforward. 
At this point, we can also check out our air filter. We'll show you a final close-up shortly so you can see better. Basically, you put the cover back on, taking care to insert the clips at the bottom first, and then you put the metal clips onto the cover. Fixing the air intake hose. You might have difficulty reconnecting the air intake hose. You'll have an easier time applying some lubricant. Apparently, WD-40 is not the best choice, but will work in a pinch to lubricate the gasket enough to get the hose back on. Apparently, silicon lubricant can contaminate things. Regardless of your choice of lubricant or spray, after you've done your research for whichever spray you prefer, take a small amount and apply it on the gasket. That will let you slip it on much easier. To seal the hose, I used self-fusing silicon tape because the tape was $10 and the hose was simply missing a clip and is $70 for a new hose. Self-fusing tape seems to be a hit and miss for submerged applications based on its reviews, but great for a light duty air seal. As long as it's stretched tightly, it quote unquote activates and bonds to itself. Reinstallation. So then reinstalling this, these torus bits, it's not that much of a challenge. You just reinsert this hose, making sure to actually pass the math sensor behind it first. Plug these bad boys in. Plug the math in while you're at it and you have easy access. And then reinstall the Torx T30 guys. Easy installation. And they just push in like so. Twist these both 180 so they match up and are in the locked position at the top. This hose ain't going nowhere. Neither is this connection. This goes on first. It's a tough hose. Now we just twist it into position. This into position. Whip out our trusty seven millimeter. Not shown on camera is reinserting the hose into the throttle body. That might also take some pushing. Tighten the clamp without over tightening it. Put the engine coming back on. Let's see how it works, by the way. So there are one, two, three, four prongs and one, two, three, four thingies that just go in. So we will see. To reinstall the trim, we start this bottom right piece and insert it such that it matches up with the hole here. Like so. Likewise. And we continue with the bottom left piece so that this hole matches up here. And this hole matches up to the top left. Next, we reinstall this trim piece under the rubber basket. So that it matches at the top right, like so. And at the bottom left, with the trim piece here. We also want to line up this filler cap and reinstall it as soon as we can with a T20 because it is wobbly and makes me nervous. We reinstall the cap and can put this cover back on. Give it the same attention. Matching up the trim pieces like so, and reinstalling the cover like so. Have to match up. Go around where they do hold. Reinstalling them. Two go here if you had had the clips that hold them. We have the one, two, three, four torques. Results. After the procedures in this video, even with AC at full blast, which adds strain on the system, the idle remained a smooth 600 RPM. After this procedure, I had a substantial improvement in how my base model 2008 VR6 Cayenne runs and couldn't be happier. Hopefully this video helped. Sub videos will be coming with specific steps isolated in case you need just that step in their own separate small videos. Thanks for tuning in. Consider subscribing for more videos in the near future.